so I wanted to quickly go over how to add um, a tool in your Fusion tool library uh, for Fusion 360. So for our example, we have a Amana, um, an Amana end mill here. This is the sheet for that tool. Um, you see it's a down cut eighth inch uh, with a quarter inch shank and an overall length of two inches with a cut length of half inch. So how would we take that and put that into a usable tool inside of Fusion 360? Well, there are a few ways to go about doing that. Um, the easiest way is using an application called GWizard. Um, but, you know, there still should be a way to do it without having this application. It just makes your life a lot easier. So I go over here, and these are all preloaded in the application. I'll use my machine for reference, um, but any of these should be fine. We'll do the HF500 uh, D-Series D420. So now if I go over to my material, and I can select uh, from a list of materials here, we will do plywood, as the sample file can be run in either plywood or softwood. Now we can go over to sizes, and you might notice this is in millimeters double click, change the value, now it's inches, go over to sizes, actually we want to go to geometry, and we can create our end mill. So it's a solid carbide, uncoated, two flute, and we can just go down here and make sure it's the same, router down cut. It's actually a straight flute down cut. Um, no, it, it is not. <laughs> now that I look at it, it's not, a, it's not a straight flute, it is just a down cut two flute. So we have two flutes, carbide, down cut. That's the first part. Now our shank diameter is a quarter inch, and our tool diameter of the flutes that are cutting is an eighth inch, 0.125. Taper angle is an important there. The stick out we can call uh, an inch is just fine. Our flute length is uh, a half inch, I believe, yes. Okay, so now we hit OK, and we have our tool loaded up. Now you see some things in red, don't worry about that, we'll look at that later. Now you can pull this data from your Amana tool website. Uh, if you actually go down to speed and feed rate, download PDF, uh, it shows you some good stuff. Here's the feed rate in inches per minute and chip load per tooth. So we're using an eighth inch. Um, and this is in inches per minute, which normally you'd have to do the math to change that. But uh, with GWizard, you can just change the value. So we have uh, 3 thou to 5 thou. So this is a D-series machine, so it's a desktop machine, and we're going to want to go on the conservative side. So let's do a chip load of 3 thou. Three. Just make sure I have that correct. Okay. There we go. So next, we can go over to our cut depths. So let's click slot, because um, if we're doing the sample test file uh, that we provide, you're mainly slotting. Um, and that slotting means there's full um, cut width engagement. So there is you're not cutting on one edge, um, like so. So if you're looking at this is your material and this is your end mill, you're not coming in, you're actually going down directly into that material. So both sides of your flute are being engaged at the same time. Um, so to, to make sure that you don't overload your tool, uh, you can set your cut width uh, so it's a full width. Um, and a rule of thumb for uh, a lot of machining applications, especially with CNC routers, is the maximum cut depth should be half the diameter of your end mill. Um, so we have an eighth inch end mill, so half the diameter would be 0 0.0625. And we can hit enter. And you see some, you see this turns to uh, green. This is a good sign. So basically what we're doing now, um, and we can change this back to millimeters per minute. Um, and I will actually pull up my calculator for you just so you can see what that looks like in inches per minute, or excuse me, millimeters per second. Um, so our RPMs 
pretty good. I found that 16,000 seems to be a good sweet spot. Now, if you're using an MM1000 that doesn't have uh, software controlled RPMs, uh, that is on the number four setting. Um, that's usually great for the test file. Now for our feed rate, you can see that's, that's pretty decently fast. Uh, for the D-series, if we go over here, our feed limit, this is the maximum we can go. It's actually 3,000, but it's backed off a little bit for rigidity. Um, we don't really want to be cutting anything besides foam that fast, as that is your rapid feed rate. Um, so our feed rate can be, uh, we can start at 1,500. Now that's, that's a pretty good starting point. Um, it might seem a little bit slow, you can definitely go faster once you're more comfortable with the machine, um, but again, Amana tools are very high quality and, and they're not cheap, so we want to prevent breaking an end mill on our first run. So now, we close that out, you can see our spec sheet here. And just to give you an idea, that uh, feed rate in in uh, seconds is 25. So I, I believe that's actually where the VCARV tutorial starts um, on our sample file page is 25 millimeters per second. So that's pretty good. Okay, so now we have our values here, our feed rate, good. The last thing to check right here is deflection, 8%. So the more deflection you have, the more likely the bit is going to snap, um, as deflection is the moving of the flutes under cutting forces um, or under load when you're milling. So 8% is fine. You can see that if you're doing something with super, super tight tolerances, you want this to be lower and lower so that it gets within spec. Um, but keep in mind, that's in millimeters. In inches, we're way beyond uh, 10,000. Uh, so it, it, we, sh we should be fine there. It's quite a light, quite a light cut. Um, so half the axial engagement and full radial. So you might say, well, I don't want to go out and purchase G Wizard. I want to be able to do this right out of the box. That's fine too. It's very, very easy to do that as well. So the only thing to do then is you don't really need this sheet. Um, there is a f mathematical formula. Uh, which will be linked in the description um, that shows you how to calculate exactly what your speeds and feeds should be using you know, a piece of paper and a calculator. Um, but a good place to start for an eighth inch end mill doing anything in softwood um, is half the diameter cut, so 0 0.0625 uh, inches in depth, 40% um, step over, and uh, 20 to 25 millimeters per second, um, or 1,000 to 1,500 millimeters per minute for your speeds, um, or excuse me, your feeds. 16,000 RPMs for your speed, um, and your plunge should be set um, much lower. I usually go half and then a little less, um, so we'll we'll say 500 uh, is a good plunge rate, just because you don't want your bit going directly into your workpiece and breaking that way. So either way, we now have our values. Um, and I'm actually just going to write them down here. So that's 1,500 per minute um, and a uh, half eighth inch cut depth. OK, so now that we have our tooling data, we want to put this into Fusion's tool library. And that's actually pretty simple. Go over to Manage, Tool Library. And this is all the example tooling. So document, I want to close out my samples, local library. So this is my tool library. You can see I don't usually do a whole lot in here. Um, I kind of input my tooling as needed. So we go up here, new mill tool, and we can put in a description, um, or we can actually just pull it from a modest website. So what I do is I take this, and I copy it, go back here, and paste that right in. The vendor is Amana, and the ID is 46341. Now this is just my example. Um, if you purchase from a different tooling manufacturer, just use their data sheet. Any reputable uh, tooling manufacturer will have the same kind of information on their end mills. Um, if you're working with, you know, eBay import tooling, 
there's going to be less documentation. Um, you're going to be able to find the diameter um, and the flute length with just a set of calipers. Um, but for chip load and uh, max RPM, stuff like that is going to be a little bit harder to find. Um, but they should be generally the same as the high quality tooling. Uh, but you may want to back them off a little bit because they aren't coming from one of these reputable manufacturers. So now we go over to our cutter. Uh, we're using a flat end mill. Uh, with two flutes made out of carbide. None of these are super, super important, but they do help. And I do my cam in millimeters because uh, UCCNC will only read millimeters. Um, so I just stick with it. It's easier for me. But since we're using uh, standard Imperial tooling, we can actually go to unit, inches, and change that for us here. So our shaft diameter is half inch. And the cool thing, or excuse me, quarter inch, cool thing about um, Fusion is you can actually type in the fraction and it will do that for you. Our flute length is half inch. Our shoulder length um, is I believe 0.75. None of this is super super critical when you're when you're inputting you know your shoulder length, your, your uh, body length, your overall length. This is two as per the uh, Amana website. Uh, the body length um, is, I'll say, 0.75 again. The only thing we really need to worry about is the flute length, as that's how deep you can cut, the diameter, which is how large the cutter is, obviously, and the shaft diameter I just did for myself. It doesn't really matter. Um, however, when calculating your speeds and feeds, uh, a full eighth inch shank and eighth inch flute uh, is going to be way less rigid than a quarter inch shank with an eighth inch flute. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind. So shaft and holder is something we don't really worry about. Now we want to go over to feeds and speeds. Now this you see is in inches per minute. So if we go back over here and do millimeters, you can see the values change. Um, 3.175 millimeters is an eighth of an inch. So that's how we can do that, go back over to feeds and speeds. So our spindle speed is going to be 16,000. Don't worry about surface speed for now. Uh, we're just looking at feed rates really here. So cutting feed rate, and the default's pretty good, 1,000 millimeters per minute, um, which is almost exactly what we came out with. And the nice thing about Fusion, it calculates your ramp feed for you, um, as well as your feed per tooth. So here, we're actually gonna change this to 1,500 just to kind of bump it up a little bit. You see ramp feed 500 millimeters per minute, plunge rate 500 per minute, and per minute. You might want to get used to using the per minute value if you're using Fusion 360 for your uh, CAD and CAM, uh, just because I don't know if there is a millimeters per second option. It's always nice to have a calculator by you um, if you're used to speaking in inches uh, or millimeters per second. So we go over here, post-processor, all these is just fine. We hit OK. Now, this tool, um, if we go here, this is the tool we just made. There's the description, and there's the cutting diameter. So all of our info is right here. So, um, so this is my local library. Close this out. So say I have a, uh, a project, and I'm just, just running it here. I'll just make a real set up real quick, um, not a pattern, a setup, there we go, hit OK, um, and let's just say we want to do a, a 2D contour around the edge, we'll select that, so in your tooling, all you have to do is tool, select, go to your local library where you created your tool, and you can create different libraries for different materials, different projects, stuff like that. So you can keep it all organized. And then we have our uh, quarter inch end mill we just made. There we go. Uh, our Amana, hit OK. And you'll see all the speeds and feeds automatically fill themselves right in here. So you don't have to do any of the, uh, any of the other work. And there we go. That is how you add uh, your tooling to Fusion 360's tooling library, either using G-Wizard, which is a very handy tool, or just doing it by hand, um, the old-fashioned way. Nothing wrong with that. I hope that helps explain some things. Thanks.